Thank you very much, my sister, the Honorable Lady Justice uh, Philomena Mwiru, uh, Your Excellency, uh, Honorable Dr. William Samoy Ruto, the President of the Republic of Kenya, Your Excellency, Honorable Rigathi Gashagwa, Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya, our Speaker, Honorable Moses Wetangura, the Speaker of the National Assembly, uh, the Deputy Chief Justice and Vice President of the Supreme Court of Kenya. Allow me also to adopt the protocol that has been established and recognize all the very distinguished guests that we have this morning, particularly recognizing our Cabinet Secretaries and I think our Prime Chief Cabinet Secretary is coming to the judiciary for the first time. I've never seen him before. You are most welcome. Uh, very distinguished uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, judges, our development partners, constitutional commissioners, our uh, partners at the National Council on the Administration of Justice, all the people we work with, the judiciary staff, everybody, who has put their hand to make this report a reality and to come and support us today. We recognize you and really say a very, very good morning to all of you. I start by appreciating and thanking uh, the President of the Republic of Kenya, Your Excellency, uh, Dr. William Ruto, for honoring the judiciary with your presence in this event. I also thank the Deputy President and the Speaker of the National Assembly, the Cabinet Secretaries, the Principal Secretaries, members of the National Assembly and the Senate, the Judicial Service Commission, chairpersons and commissioners of the various independent constitutional commissions present in this event. In addition, I'm gratified by the presence of the ends of various agencies in the justice sector and the representatives of our development partners. Ladies and gentlemen, Your Excellency, the launch of the Sonja Report 2021-2022 in the presence of the leaders of all arms of government speaks to the shared responsibility towards the realization of the constitutional right of access to justice as enshrined in Article 48 of our Constitution. This calls for all of us to embrace collaborative institutional engagement because indeed we serve one citizen, the one we have named Wanjiku. We are all most grateful, Your Excellency, for the remarkable commitment to the constitutional goal of access to justice that you have demonstrated since you assumed office as the President of the Republic. Your triple commitment to address financial constraints that has hampered the optimal service delivery by the judiciary through increased budgetary allocation. Also, addressing judiciary's human resource constraints through appointment of more judges and curing the judiciary's acute infrastructure deficit through support of the judiciary's digitization agenda and also your commitment to support us establish 100 small claims courts uh, in, and also courts in all, the, in all the constituencies and I courts in all the counties as part of your legacy agenda are truly clear of irreputable evidence that you intend to partner with the judiciary to realize the objective of establishing an efficient and accessible justice system, and for that, we are most grateful. Your hand of support and collaboration to the judiciary could not have come at a more appropriate time. 
This is given that the report we are launching today, like the previous ones, show that the judiciary is not operating optimally due to significant budgetary, infrastructural, and human resource constraints. We therefore look forward to working with Your Excellency as guided by the spirit of cooperative dialogue and responsibility sharing as envisaged in the Constitution to ensure access to justice for all. The fact that Your Excellency has embraced deepening access to justice as part of your government's bottom-up agenda makes this decisive moment in the history of the Kenyan justice sector. It is a moment that historians will in future look back to and identify as a transformative moment when all state organs jointly embarked on the journey of establishing an efficient justice system, which is a key ingredient and an abra for the realization of our national aspiration of social and economic development. In the judiciary, we are currently pursuing a strategic vision that we call social transformation through access to justice. This vision is a continuation of the pioneering judiciary transformation framework instituted by our Chief Justice Emeritus Wire Mutunga and sustaining judiciary transformation which was heralded by my predecessor, the Honorable Chief Justice David Maraga. The thrust of Sturge, as we uh, nickname it, is putting in place a people-centered justice system. We aim to remove all barriers that have hindered access to justice for the excluded, or those you have identified in your yeah, policy idea. as uh, being in the bottom of the pyramid. We believe that this factory dovetails with the government's agenda. Your Excellency, the reality is that removing barriers to access to justice is a challenge that the judiciary cannot surmount on its own. Therefore, all arms of government should join hands and work together to master this formidable challenge. My call and plea today is that it is time for us to come together to build our judiciary to be a strong and independent institution an institution where judicial services are truly public goods that are accessible to all citizens, including the vulnerable, who are the most in need of judicial services, but have historically been excluded from accessing justice. Over the last one year, Your Excellency, the judiciary has been hard-pressed to work in pursuit of the strategic outcomes identified in the stage. The report shows that we have made great strides in ensuring that our justice system is accessible, it is efficient, it is also expeditious and cost effective as mandated in the Constitution. At the same time, it also offers the nation and grims of the vital and urgent areas in which our corrective intervention is still required. Your Excellency, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, during the financial year that we are reporting, 404,000 cases were filed in the judiciary, out of which 257,000 were criminal cases and 147,000 cases were civil cases. And just to get a glimpse of where these cases came from, 42% of them actually came from five counties, Nairobi, Nakuru, Mombasa, Kiambu, and Machakos. These courts recorded a case clearance rate of 94%, where 380 cases were resolved, and that I think deserves a crap. 
a rate, a clearance rate of 94% is really good. At the end of the financial year, we had 878,000 cases pending before our courts. And this comprises of 294,000 criminal cases and 384 civil cases. This is an increase by 5% from the previous year. 76% of these pending cases are before the magistrate's courts. Of the pending cases at the end of the period, 50% of them have been in the court system for over one year. This is a 10% decline from the previous year. In pursuit of our vision of ensuring that our justice system is efficient and cost effective, we pursued a number of game-changing intervention and initiatives aimed at enhancing access to justice and service delivery in the course of the financial year that we are reporting. As a way of expanding the doorways of justice, 11 new ELC courts and six new I court stations were established across the country. I think you need to applaud that. In addition, two Supreme Court sub-registries were opened, five Court of Appeal sub-registries, and three High Court sub-registries were established during this year. These initi initiatives expanded the footprint of these courts across the country, thereby ensuring ESA geographical reach to judicial services by our litigants. Another transformative intervention, Your Excellency, during the year was the establishment of 11 small claims courts and appointment of 25 adjudicators to man these courts. The small claim court is a revolutionary court that has enabled the resolution of claims below 1 million shillings to be resolved within 60 days in a process marked by informal and less cumbersome court process. Because of these features, the court has made significant contribution to the economy and contributed toward ease of doing business during the short period it has been in operation. During the year we are reporting, Your Excellency, the Small Claims Court resolved 9,315 cases, thereby releasing Kenya shillings 1.431 billion shillings in the economy. Having witnessed the revolutionary potential of the Small Claims Court over the last one year, we project that if we have in place 100 Small Claims Courts operationalized in the country, this will mark a turning point for the efficiency of the justice sector. In fact, if we get adequate support, we think of having a night shift operation uh, what the governor was talking about, uh, with some adjudicators sitting from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. in Nairobi and Mombasa cities, which would be a first for any public sector institution in Kenya and regionally. This will certainly place our country on the path to claiming the top spot in the continent in terms of efficiency in commercial disputes. The solution ends enhancing the country's attractiveness as a business and investment destination. To expedite the resolution of sexual and gender-based cases, we operationalized a sexual and gender-based violence court at Chanzu. This is part of our tailor-made intervention, targeting access to justice for the vulnerable groups in our society, especially uh, the, the children who are victims of violence. We hope to scale up the rollout of the SGBB courts throughout the country, and we are very, very happy, uh, Your Excellency the Governor, to partner with you within Nairobi to operationalize this, uh, this SGBB courts, especially where we are trying to build the small claims courts. In addition, we decentralized the political parties dispute tribunal across seven regions during the period. 
This tribunal, Your Excellency, received and concluded 198 matters within one month of filing. I think we need to appreciate that tribunal. <laughs> then decentralization of the PPDT and a significant impact on accessibility and expeditious disposal or pre-election disputes adjudication regime during the 2022 electoral cycle. It enabled us to do away with the specter of litigants traveling to Nairobi across the country at, as, as it was witnessed during the 2013 and 2017 electoral cycles where all pre-election disputes were hand and centrally determined in Nairobi. In pursuit of our multi-door approach to access to justice, Your Excellency, the last financial year saw the strengthening and expansion of the alternative dispute resolution mechanism. Our court next mediation program was expanded to an additional eight court stations during the year. This means the court next mediation is now operational in 94 court stations. If you were Christians, you would say amen. <laughs> This period also saw the referral of 2,245 matters uh, sent to mediation by various courts and the resolution of 1,918 of the refund matters were resolved. The judiciary in the reporting period launched three alternative justice uh, system suites and models that we launched in Kajiando, Isioro, and Nakuru. Additionally, 10 AJS mechanisms panels were launched in Kajiando County. It is noteworthy that the Kajiando model currently focuses on land-related matters, out of which already we have dealt with 61 and resolved them successfully. These are cases that had been pending resolution with the, land, with the National Land Commission for a long time. The judiciary also mounted mobile courts in far-flung areas in our continued quest to bridge the geographical distance between litigants and courts. We note, Your Excellency, the average distance traveled by courts to mobile courts location was 90 kilometers, with the farthest being 270 kilometers. We therefore operationalized five new mobile courts in the course of the last year. This brings the total number of mobile courts across the country to 57. The total number of cases concluded by the mobile courts during the period we are reporting are 5,220. Uh, Your Excellency, you are excited to see our virtual court. Let me speak to uh, what we have done on leveraging on technology. The use of information and communication technology, which we have used to deepen the efficiency of our operations and the delivery of judicial service. We found technological innovations such as uh, virtual courts, earrings to be not only cost effective to litigants, but also an enabler to efficiency in the service delivery. We concluded the installation of in-court recording solutions in five courtrooms in Mirimani, another one in engineer or courts. We have also deployed 15 units of video conferencing solution system aimed at facilitating remote trials and cases involving parties or witnesses who are abroad. In addition, the judiciary in partnership with the Ministry of ICT and Google Africa connected 163 court stations to the national optic fiber backbone infrastructure, the one we call no FBI, no FBI. A further 12 remote court stations will be connected through mobile broadband. We remain acutely cognizant of the unequal access to technologies, limited internet access across the country, and lack of knowledge or ability to use technologies deployed. We are therefore developing strategies and innovations to mitigate the potential of digital exclusion. 
this includes the initiative to provide e-judiciary services through Unduma centers for members of the public who cannot access uh, internet. Instead of them going to cyber uh, cafes, they can go to the Unduma center and find a judiciary desk where they can do their firing or conduct their hearings. <laughs> On human resource capital, Your Excellency, it is a truism that performance of the judiciary's mandate is pegged foremost on having adequate and motivated personnel to deliver judicial and support services. In this regard, in collaboration with the Judicial Service Commission, the judiciary employed various modalities to build capacity of our human resource capital. For optimal function, the required judiciary establishment, Your Excellency, is 9,417 members of staff. For us to be operational, uh, opti to operate optimally, we need 348 judges, we need 1,200 judicial officers, uh, those are the magistrates and the cathies. We need 650 law clerks and legal researchers to support the work of the judges and the judicial officers, and 7,219 judicial staff. At the end of the reporting period, the employee complement was at 66%. That is 6,182, an increase by 10% from the previous year. Judges were at 49%, uh, magistrates and cadres also at 49%, law clerks and legal researchers at 27%, and judicial staff at 66%. We need the continued support of the executive and the parliament to address the human resource constraints that are prevailing in the judiciary. The judiciary also made a conscious effort to create a workplace that is inclusive and reflective of the community in which we operate as demanded by the Constitution. Overall gender representation in the judiciary, Your Excellency, female to male, is at the ratio of 49 to 51, signifying compliance with the key constitutional imperatives. I expect you to clap for that because judiciary is providing leadership, those who are struggling to understand how to bring gender equality in their places of work, they can come for benchmarking in the judiciary. <laughs> Significantly, Your Excellency, the judiciary believes in the vitality and promise of the youth. 71% of the judiciary employees are between the ages of 26 to 45 years. I and the Deputy Chief Justice are the oldest. <laughs> we still have a long way to go, including getting judges of the High Court, the Environment and Land Court, Employment and Labor Relations Court in all the counties. We require magistrates sitting in all the sub-counties and adjudicators for our small claims courts across the whole country. Addressing the human resource constraint in this regard is one of the areas where we are seeking the continued support of the executive and parliament. I will also speak briefly on the financial performance. Uh, during the reporting period, one of the key achievements was the operationalization of the judiciary fund at the end of the judiciary financial year. This followed from a successful consultative process between the judiciary, the national treasury, the central bank, and the control of budget. The Judiciary Fund account and its operational accounts were opened and activated on July 1, 2022. The Judiciary Fund Committee has been established to oversee budget implementation and to regularly advise the Chief Registrar of the Judiciary on the performance of the fund. The judiciary allocation for the year 2021-2022 was 18.1 billion, out of which 15.9 billion 
was for the current expenses and Kenya shillings 2.154 uh, billion was for the development budget. This represents about, Your Excellency, uh, 0. 6% of the total national budget, and just a small fraction of these resources uh, of what is actually allocated to Parliament and the Executive. Uh, we never like to compare ourselves with other people, but when it comes to budget allocation, uh, we are just short of shy of saying that uh, consider the judiciary the same way you consider Parliament. It is also well below the international best practice of 3% allocation of the national budget to judiciaries. Your Excellency's decisive measures to correct and improve this historical underfunding will bring reprieve brief to millions of Kenyans seeking justice across the country. Many times I've asked myself why we have had to build prefabricated structures on our rooftop, on a building that is a national museum. Then I was told there was no money to do better than to just build those prefabs. I wondered why we built a toilet out there. Uh, we could have just built a building, but I was told the money that was there could only afford to build the prefabs and build a, a, an abolition outside. Uh, so we all have to keep walking outside or sometimes even to the hotel because the facilities are not uh, sufficient. On accountability mechanisms, it is important to report to Kenyans that we have rolled out robust accountability performance measurement and complaint handling mechanism in line with the constitutional mandate given to the judiciary. Uh, whereby we are supposed to be independent, but at the same time accountable. It is notable that in November 2021, uh, we invited the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission to undertake a comprehensive judiciary systems audit. This systemic review of the policies, our procedures and practices of the judiciary will definitely identify the avenues and opportunities for unethical and corrupt practices so that the judiciary can work towards eliminating them. Regarding the walling state of physical infrastructure, the judiciary has formulated a physical infrastructure Marshall Plan that targets to meet the contemporary justice demands by Kenyans. This, Your Excellency, includes a high court building in counties without such courts, magistrate courts in constituencies without the courts, and a hundred small claims courts. We also urgently need to put up a modern Supreme Court building to house the Supreme Court and the administrative headquarters of the judiciary. Your Excellency, we also need a Court of Appeal building to manage the expanded needs of the court and the Kenya Judiciary Academy. We thank Your Excellency for signaling that addressing these infrastructure concerns constitutes an integral part of your legacy. We will work with you to realize this dream that will revolutionize the delivery of justice in our country. In conclusion, Allow me to thank you, Your Excellency, and all our distinguished guests who have graced this occasion once more for honoring us with your presence and for listening to us. I also thank the team that worked so diligently to prepare the Sonja Report 2021-2022, which was rent my, by my very own indefatigable uh, energized chief of staff, Madam Rose, Rose Washuka. I now welcome Your Excellency and distinguished guests to watch a very short video highlighting the contents of the report uh, followed by a visual launch. I thank all of you and I embrace all of you and pray that God will continue to guide us and guide our country to prosperity. Thank you.